Got a no start complaint. No dashboard lights, no crank, no nothing. Alright, let's throw jump back on here because I don't have my meter. And see you in a second. We have no light still and still no crank. So let's get in the shop here. And here we have 12.5 at the battery. And still no dashboard light. So let's take a look at the schematic here. All right, so what we have here is the main schematic, at least the beginning of it, for the power feeds going to this machine. So right off the bat, we know we've got 12.5 volts at the battery, but we have nothing going on at the key switch. We don't have any of the lights on the dashboard. Start relay is not engaging. Starter motor is not cranking over. So where do we start? Where do we go to look? I mean, we could go through and we could check each one of these fuses individually but seeing as we have a problem here to the key switch we got no light right off the bat you're thinking okay well the one that would make sense would be fuse 6 at 15 amp because if that's blown we would have 12 volts up to here and we'd have 0 volts on this side which would mean no relay signal, no discharge light, uh, no fuel shut off with the key on. We wouldn't have any of that. So, seeing as the uh, fuse box right here is actually located right next to the battery, that's one place we could go. The other thing we want to check, though, is because we don't have theoretically anything working. I shouldn't say theoretically, we know nothing else is working and what do we have here we have a single pin male to female connector from the battery leading up to the fuse block so right here this is the first place we're gonna check and what we want to see is 12 volts on one side 12 volts on this side and then get all this out of here we want if we were to take our meter and go from here to here and there's a real fancy looking meter there's our little display screen we were to have this going to the we'll say the negative side this one going to the positive side doesn't really matter we would want to see zero volts across here. We don't want any voltage drop in this connector. If we have corrosion or anything else in this connector using up voltage, say say it's partially corroded and we have instead of zero volts here we read five volts on that meter. Well then we're only gonna have seven volts available to power all this up which as soon as you go to turn the key and then it's trying to light up this indicator uh, feed down to the alternator, feed to the fuel shutoff solenoid, neutral switch, and everything else off of this circuit. It's going to draw that voltage down. So, even if we had low voltage though, we'd still see, instead of a real bright light here, this might be real dim if we had low voltage going to it. So we can go behind the dashboard as well and we can check the key switch here, back probe that. But to me, seeing as we're already down in the battery, first place we're going to check is right here for good power supply. It's quick, easy, and it's only a couple inches from there to check in these fuses. So that's where we're going to go. And if you continue watching this video, at the end here we'll throw in a section trying to explain the concept of a voltage drop to everybody if you're not familiar with it and why it's a, a, a big savior. I'm leaning to an open somewhere between here on the battery 
in this feed here. Somewhere in this section of circuit, I'm thinking we have an open circuit. And that's why we're not getting power 12 volts to anything else. So let's get back to the video away from the boring schematic stuff and we will see what exactly we find. So here we're going to hook our meter up again. We got 12.52 at the battery and we're going to back probe that main connector we were looking at, that X1. Let's uh, cut in a little closer there and we're just going to check right on the back side of the connector here. We're going to check to see what our input, input voltage is. So take our lead out, put our back probe in there and what do we have? We've got 12 volts on the front side of the connector, so now we're going to check the back side of the connector. And we've got nothing wiggling around, still nothing. Still got no power on the back side. So now what we're going to do is do a voltage drop test across the connector. So we are on the back side now, we're not getting anything, but we had voltage in the front. So we'll disconnect our ground lead, put another back probe in there, and we're going to measure how much voltage is being used across that connector. In this case, don't pay any attention to the negative. Uh, it's just the polarity of my leads, but we're losing 12 volts in that connector, which is no good. That's why we got no power feed. So there's your 12.4. All right. So that's the first thing we're going to check out. That doesn't mean that there's not anything else going on here, but that's definitely a major cause for concern. Uh, if we're losing that much voltage being used up by the connector, it's essentially a high resistance spot, and that's going to keep us from getting good power to everything else, and it's going to keep everything from working. Uh, why deer put a single connector for a you know 12, 12 inch section of wire? I'm not sure. I look down in there, no crazy corrosion at all. Just a little dirty and greasy. Nothing bad. So let's see what we got here. And we are going to plug that back in. And that's really all I did. I grabbed some contact cleaner, sprayed it in there, but we plug it back in, and now we're going to check on the back side of the connector and see what kind of voltage we have on the back side now, whereas we had zero before. We're expecting to see 12.5, 12.2, whatever it may be. Uh, battery is a little weak, so. And 12 volt at the back side of the connector, so we're good to go there. So now what we're going to do is get ourselves set up for a voltage amperage test on the starting charging system. So we've got our battery load tester hooked up. We've got our multimeter hooked on there as well. So what we're going to do is load down this to get full alternator output. Off to the left we have our amp clamp that we're going to stick on the power feed coming out of the alternator. So there's our amperage clamp that allows us to measure whatever amperage we have going through any circuit without having to disassemble anything and uh, it'll exceed you know your average multimeters 10 amp rating because you don't have to put it in line. So we're just getting our meter set up. Set it to our low amp 60. And the yellow trace is going to be our voltage. Yep, we're set to our 60 amp. Yellow trace is voltage, green trace is amperage. So we got that there. And get ourselves set up with the right scaling and all. Like I said, green is uh, amperage and yellow is voltage. And forgive the shaky cam here. We're trying to show you our, our alternator feed wire right there on top. 
and that's where we're going to be hooking our amp clamp up to just get that conduit out from around it stick our clamp on there and then we're going to fire this machine up and we're going to get alternator amperage readings as well as voltage readings all right, you can hear the engine running. It's not running very good, but it is running. A little smoky. All right, so now we just got to invert our trace on the amperage side. So right now, with no load on the engine other than the battery, uh, we're sitting right charging at 14.45. Live amperage readings about 8 to 10 amps. So right here, we're going to crank it down and simulate a heavy load on it. That's going to full field our alternator at idle. So you can see our yellow voltage trace dropping down. And uh, we're right about nine and a half volts there and at low speed we're going up to 21 amps on the alternator that's pretty good output we let off and we're recovering back up to 12.7 12.9 keep going and now we're going to rev the whole engine up we're at 14 and anywhere from 30 to 35 amps approximately charging which is very good that lets us know that we don't have any kind of charging system problems right now. This is just a nice secondary test to do to make sure everything is good once you find the initial no start symptoms. Alright, so we're going to stop the recording and zoom out here. And now we're going to zoom in a little bit closer. And once more, we just want to get a good Nice close look at what's going on here. So what we got here is our full field amperage here. So 41 amps top at 13.8 volts. And that's just our little up down sine wave pattern. That's what we would expect from an alternator with good diodes. So that's telling us alternators putting out rated amperage for this machine and voltage is keeping up. So. I'd say once we get this uh, connector actually fixed, we're going to replace the, that power feed connector leading to the fuse block. I'd say this machine, other than needing engine work, is good to go.